Okay, in the pedal, but whatever. All right. Hey, this is Ryan from 60 Cycle Home, the guitar podcast. Today, I'm interviewing Billy Cardigan from Effects and Pedals Arena Corner. How's it going, Billy? Hey, how's it going? We just got done uh, shooting some episodes here in Philly. We're reviewing some cool rock pedals, a blue one, a pink one, and a white and red pedal. So tell me, Billy, how did you get started doing pedal demos? There was many uh, pedal reviews on YouTube, and I saw other people doing it, so I thought that it would be good to also do it. So what color guitar sounds the best, and what's the difference between the sound of a red guitar or blue guitar or even a black guitar? Many people say that guitars and the, and the sound um, is in the fingers, but to me, if you have the different color guitars, um, that's the one that you're using to make the sound. You spend a lot of time on your show in the vaping sub corner with John Paul Guernico. Guernico, Guernico. John Paul Guernico is a, a colleague of mine and a good, cool guy who's a big vape guy and he loves vaping and smoking vapes. So many people that are into guitar effects pedals are also into vaping. So it just seems like a perfect and natural uh, thing to include on the pedal show because there's a lot of overlap so the people that are into both can find out about the latest pedals and also the latest vape juices and accessories that they can vape with. Which kind of pedal do you think is the coolest and which is the sickest? It's very difficult to say what's the sickest pedal because there's so many sick pedals out there on the market today. There's also a lot of cool sweet pedals so it's not easy or possible to say which one is the sickest or the sweetest. To me, the sick sounds come from the fuzz or the high loud boxes that make the, the guitar sound more like a rock instrument to make the rock sound. Because when you plug in your guitar to the uh, amp, it just sounds boring and like bad music it doesn't sound hard it just sounds like strings but louder but when you plug in the loud box or fuzz pedal or high gain distortion pedal the sound immediately becomes a rock sound that you've heard in all the rock songs what does your perfect sunday look like my perfect sunday involves um well on Saturday night, I'll go to sleep. I do suffer from sleep apnea, and I, I'm i I'm consulting with some doctors now. It hasn't been treated yet. So I do have a lot of difficulty sleeping. So a perfect Sunday for me will be if I can make it through a Saturday night because my issue is that I snore so loudly that the snoring immediately wakes me up. So I will continuously fall asleep repeatedly, but the moment that I fall asleep, I snore, and it's so loud that it, it, it wakes me up. So if I make it through a Saturday night with a couple hours of rest, and I just feel so uh, refreshed and good. Um, before I was doing the pedal shows, I worked at Rite Aid. So often they would have me work on Sundays because that was the time when other people didn't want to work. But I just didn't have as many friends as some of the other employees. And, and I didn't have, you know, I don't have any um friends or, or family or anything like that. So to me, it was okay to work on Sunday. And I enjoyed working there. It was cool. I did quit that job so that I could review pedals more often because it takes a long time to make these episodes. Um, you know, uh, many, many hours, um, many takes. Often we lose the footage before it gets on the computer. So um, a perfect Sunday for me would just be to wake up with some good sleep and get, uh, if it was before, it would be a shift at Rite Aid, but now it would be edit the footage that didn't get lost and make a cool video so I can show my friends that are on YouTube and in the internet world how guitars sound. And the pedals, that, and how they sound. Do you think the pedal market is oversaturated? 
Or do you think there's still room for more overdrives and fuzzes? Well, the first part of the question I did not understand. I don't know what oversaturated means. But as far as if there's too many of the lab boxes, no. There's so many... The more boxes there are, the more good music there is because it makes there's more out there and more people will plug them in to make rock music. You see, now there's many, many pedals and music is getting better. You can see that the music industry and everything, there's so much cool rock music. If you look on YouTube, there's so many people just playing the music on the pedals and showing it on YouTube. Before, there's only a few cool bands, Led Zeppelin, Pink Floyd, Metallica, um, but now you can look on YouTube and see many very talented and cool people just playing really cool stuff with a lot of the cool pedals. And I say bring more and more pedals in, uh, uh, however they come here, just bring them in. You often play Mary Had a Little Lamb and Twinkle Twinkle Little Star in your effects demos. Is there any reason why these two classic nursery rhymes are such obvious choices to show off what a pedal can do? And do you think there's any other classic nursery rhymes you're going to include in your repertoire in the future? Well, I consider myself to be a rock musician. I like playing rock music and I like hard, heavy sounding music. Um, I play the Mary Had a Little Lamb and Twinkle Twinkle because I'm not a... I'm a good guitarist, but I'm not great, so I'm not as good as Kirk Hammett yet or um, the guy from Led Zeppelin, but I'm good. So those are songs that are that I can play, and I can play them good, and the reason I use them is because you can really see when I play them clean without the pedals that they'd sound stupid, but when you turn the pedals on, that's when it sounds like rock music. So. You're going to see a lot more as I get better at guitar and learn more songs. There's going to be more songs that I'm going to play. <clears throat> Sometimes you switch the color of guitar that you're using, but you always seem to be using a black amp. Why are you so loyal to black amps? The reason I have a black amp in the music, uh, in the videos, is because black amps are, most amps are black, but guitars come in many different colors. So I saw some amps that had different colors to them, but I didn't have them. So I didn't use them in the videos, but there are different color amps, but most of them are black. And the ones that I have are black amps. So that's why I play those and they're good. They make very loud, cool music come from the guitar. Do you have any tips or tricks for anyone looking to get into the pedal demo game? If you want to get into the pedal demo game, it's a really good idea. It's there's many people that do it and the more the merrier because the more cool people that are just playing really good music through these pedals and just showing how the pedals really make music better and how the pedals are all different and make music good and better, the better that the world will be because before pedals music was bad and now it's good because rock sounding music is the good music and without the pedals you can't make that music. So all the people that um, make music with the pedals make music that's better. And all the pedals are different and they, you know, they, they all do things that just make music better. Everyone knows by now that you use the MPAA rating system to score the pedals that you demo. Can you give me an example of a G-rated pedal and an XXX pedal? A great triple X pedal, uh, you know, I'd have to go review some of the episodes we've done, but I mean, there's just so many classic pedals. The, um, the Big Muff from Electro Harmonics is a triple X pedal because it's a loud and it made the sound louder. Um, the, um, I don't, we'd have to go look at the videos. I don't remember the name of any of the pedals we've reviewed, but there were some real cool ones with a triple X rating. I wouldn't give a pedal a G rating unless it really sucked and didn't make a cool rock sound. But to, so far they all did that. So what can we expect from Effects and Pedals Arena Corner in the future? Well, our big plan for next year is to do a feature-length 
uh, film called Effects and Pedals Arena Corner, the movie. It's going to be the longest pedal demonstration of all time, and it will be a feature-length film that includes all your favorite characters from the show, such as Billy Cardigan, that's me, um, John Paul Guernico from the Vaping Sub Corner, Chef Dolce Vino, who does our cooking demonstrations, um, Bryce Adams, our sound guy, who some people haven't met yet, Angel Jones, our camera guy, who people haven't met yet, um, Harry Goldberg, our producer, is going to be in it, and it's just going to be a whirlwind action adventure film in the genre that I like, which is action. Um, and it's going to be a cool movie that's going to feature rock music, guitars, and it's going to show that pedals are really important and good and that people really should use pedals because they really make music better. Well, thanks for sitting down with me, Billy. I think I speak for everyone when I say that we're all looking forward to more informative demos and incredible entertainment from Effects and Pedals Arena Corner in the near future. Thanks so much for having me. I've watched your cool show and you you played many cool rock guitars and many pedals. You had a yellow or uh, red looking beard. Do you consider your beard to be a red one or a yellow one? Oh, okay. Uh, you're, you're asking me questions now. All right. I thought we were over. Thanks for asking, Billy. I've been meaning to clarify this for a long time. You know, on camera, my beard looks like it might be yellowish red, but in actuality, if you get up close to it, and the people who know me personally know this, my beard has a lot of different colored hair in it. It's got yellow and red, obviously, but then it's also got black hairs, it's got white hairs, it's got gray hairs, it's got brown hairs. It has a lot of different colors of hair. I'm kind of like a calico cat right here. People who are fans of all different colors of beard hair are going to find something they like in my beard, that's for sure. You wore many cool shirts on the show, which I liked. Where do you buy your shirts? I actually buy a lot of my shirts from Old Navy. First reason is that I have an unusually long midsection, so I have to buy tall sizes so that the shirts will go down below my belly button. Um, I like Old Navy's cut. They have a nice slim fit that fits my slim body and my wide shoulders. Also, they have really great prices, and there's also an element of child labor that really just warms my heart. I like to know that kids out there are getting jobs and able to support their families in other countries. You're in the California state of the United States. I'm in the Pennsylvania state, so we're on opposite sides. <clears throat> What's the difference between the East and the West Coast? I am in the California state. Uh, the, the problem with me is that I've never traveled to the East Coast, so I don't actually know what it's like. But if I've learned anything from watching television and movies. I know that everything on the East Coast is New York or it's just like the, the woods and there's just woods and people go out in the woods and they get lost and usually murdered. That's all I know about the, the East Coast. Uh, the West Coast is great because we have beaches and we have hamburgers and we have Hollywood. A lot of people don't know that Hollywood actually takes up most of the West Coast. Whenever you hear someone complaining about the West Coast and you know Holly, Holly weirdos, they're talking about most of the West Coast because that's everything. You always film your show with a microphone like this. Why did you do it that way? I like to use the microphone like this because uh, I like to show off this really cool orange cable that I have here made for me by, by sinusoid cables. Uh, I've used lapel mics in the past and they just didn't show off this orange cable and so that was a huge negative for me. Uh, also when I'm using the SM58 here that's connected to the orange sinusoid cable, uh, it really helps me in editing when I'm editing my videos so that I don't have to edit out the sound of the amps which are close by or if I use a lapel mic where it's like clipped to my shirt or whatever those pick up everything in the room and I have to do a lot more editing so I know it doesn't look as cool to have the microphone here but then the plus is you get to see the cool cable and I get to save a lot of time editing which means I get to make more videos and everyone wants more videos from me I just get letters all day just more videos please more videos we want to see more videos so i gotta keep everyone happy how old are you 
Well, I was born in August, almost September. It was the 31st day of August, and uh, the year was 1981. So if this is 2017 and we're after August... Um, uh, one. So it, that was 10 to 91. So 2011 is 30. 18, and then I'm past August in 2017. So I'm, I'm 36. I'm 36 years old. I feel 36. I think that's, I think that's my age. Do you have anything else you want to ask me? I mean, I'm I'm here. You've got me at the at the little table. You can ask me stuff if you want. The interview was over when I ended it, but then you kept asking questions. You started asking me questions, so...